Meghan Markle and Prince Harry can be seen cuddling baby Archie and kissing his head in a trailer for the upcoming ITV documentary Harry and Meghan, An African Journey. A trailer has been released for a documentary on Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's royal tour of Africa. Heartwarming footage shows Prince Harry cradling Archie Harris in Mountbatten Windsor as Meghan strokes her son's head and plants a kiss on his forehead. In the sweet trailer, ITV anchor Tom Bradby narrates, It was a journey but not always the one I was expecting. Harry smiled at the camera during the intimate family moment which will be aired in full on Sunday night. Seconds later he said let's go as the family went to meet Archbishop Desmond Tutu. The ITV documentary, Harry and Meghan, An African Journey, will air at 9 p.m. and presenter Tom Brady said it will reveal the happiness alongside the pressure and pain of being a royal. Mr. Bradby said, the story of their time in Africa was of passion for their work, pride and happiness, but also a world of pressure and pain behind the brave faces. It comes after a royal expert claimed Meghan and Harry are desperate for Archie to have a normal upbringing away from the spotlight. Angela Mollard said on the podcast Royals that the Duke and Duchess ideally want to give him a childhood similar to that of Zara Tindall, and daughters Mia and Lena. She said, I've been reading, biographer, Angela Levine, she spent a lot of time with him, I think nearly a year on royal tours and in interviews. He very much feels that he's down that hierarchy from William, it should afford him the kind of life that Zara and Peter Phillips enjoyed. He's looked at his cousins all these years and thought how smart it was that Princess Anne didn't give her children titles. They've been allowed to grow up fairly normally, both Zara and Peter, and then their children, Mia and her little sister Lena, and Peter's children, are just not in the limelight. I think that's what he desperately wants for Archie. When Archie was born, Prince Harry and Meghan rejected him from having a title like Cousins Princess Charlotte, Prince George, and Prince Louis. Instead, he will simply be known as Master Archie after Meghan and Harry decided not to give him one of the Duke of Sussex's lesser titles, the Earl of Dumbarton. This is a signal the couple want their child to be a private citizen. The story of their time in Africa was of passion for their work, private happiness but also a world of pressure and pain behind the brave faces. Mr. Bradby tweeted earlier in October, just finished filming a documentary on Harry and Meghan in Africa. I think it will explain a lot when it airs. The ITV documentary will air at 9 p.m. this Sunday. Meghan and Harry kicked off their 10-day tour of Africa on September 23. Their first engagement was to the Nyanga Township in South Africa. In a speech, Meghan said, May I just say that while I am here with my husband as a member of the royal family, I want you to know that for me I am here with you as a mother, as a wife, as a woman, as a woman of color and as your sister. The American former actress stayed in South Africa with Archie while Harry also visited Botswana, Malawi, and Angola. The tour was the Sussex's first as a family and Harry ended the trip with Meghan and Archie in Johannesburg. During the tour, Meghan and Harry introduced baby Archie to Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Royal fans were delighted to catch another glimpse of the adorable baby, who was born in May. Harry traveled to Angola where he paid tribute to the landmine work of his mother Princess Diana, who tragically died in 1997. In Malawi, Prince Harry paid tribute to a British soldier killed in an anti-poaching operation, and he took part in tree planting in Botswana. Meghan completed a number of solo engagements while Harry was in Angola, Malawi, and Botswana. On the last day of the tour, Harry said, Ever since I came to this country as a young boy, trying to cope with something I could never possibly describe, Africa has held me in an embrace that I will never forget and feel incredibly fortunate for that. Every time I come here I know that I'm not alone. I always feel wherever I am on this continent that the community around me provides a life that is enriching and is rooted in the simplest things, connection, connection with others and the natural environment. 